click the bell icon to turn on notifications. So I just want to start out very quickly just by going through what exactly is a formula in Excel. Well, a formula performs a calculation and formulas in Excel use something called functions. And we can use one function in a formula or we could combine multiple functions together to perform more complex calculations. So, for example, on this first worksheet here, you can see I have the months of the year and I have the quarters running across the top. And in the total for quarter one, if I click on this cell, if you glance up to the formula bar, you can see that I have a formula in here, which is simply adding up all the numbers above. And this is using the sum function in this formula. OK, so that is an example of a formula that uses one function. And there are so many different functions in Excel, over 450, in fact. And if we jump across to our formulas tab, you'll find all your functions in the functions library just here. And they're all divided down into different categories. So it really depends what you're trying to do as to which formula you use. Now, I will say that there are probably maybe 10 to 15 formulas that you will use frequently or on a regular basis. You definitely will not get through all 450 over the course of your Excel career. At least I would hope that you wouldn't, because some of these are also very specialized towards specific industries. So uh, industries like accounting. So 10 to 15, which you'll use all the time, as long as you know them well, you're pretty much good to go. So with all that said, let me illustrate very clearly why we use formulas. Now I'm going to scroll down so that we're underneath this table. I'm just going to type in a couple of numbers just here, 10 and 20. But if I want to add up these numbers, what could I do here? Well, I could click in a cell below. And if I was to type in 10 plus 20, that's not going to work because Excel doesn't know that I want to perform a calculation. So in order to tell Excel I want to perform a calculation, we need to type an equal sign into the cell. And then I could type 10 plus 20 and it's going to give me the correct answer. But this isn't the most efficient way of doing this. Why? Well, if the number changes or if one of these numbers changes, that formula isn't going to update. So if I change this number to 15 and hit enter, the formula is no longer correct. And that is because I've hard coded the numbers into this formula. So a better way of performing calculations is to use the cell references. So what I could do instead is select cell C19 plus and then C20, hit enter. I'm going to get the result. But if anything changes in these cells, then that formula is going to update. So that is why we tend to use cell references as opposed to hard coding numbers into our formulas. Now, I will say there will be some occasions where you do need to hard code a number in, but most of the time, always use cell references. Now, I've just been adding up two numbers, which is perfectly fine. But what if I want to add up a longer list of numbers like the list that we have above? Well, this is where I would use the sum function. So I'm going to type in equals, type in sum. And notice as I start to type this formula, Excel's IntelliSense, that is what we call Excel's kind of internal memory system, searches through all of the formulas within Excel and gives us a list of everything that matches what we've typed. So you can see I've typed in sum and it's basically brought up every single formula that contains the word sum. So what I can do is I can actually select the formula from IntelliSense. So I can either double click on the formula to select it or if it's highlighted, so I can see that sum is highlighted, I can just press the tab key and it's going to put in that first bracket for me. OK, so that IntelliSense is there to help you. Now, when we're constructing our formulas, we use brackets. Everything we want to calculate goes inside our brackets when we're using a function. And note underneath, I have this little screen tip pop up and it's showing me the different arguments for this formula. And that is what we call these. So where it says number one and number two, these are formula arguments. So these are the information that's required in order for this formula to work. So basically what Excel is saying to me here, what is the number that you want to add up? What is the first number? Well, I want to add up all of the numbers above. So I can simply just select the range of numbers. C3 
the two dots mean 2C14. I then need to close the bracket. Another thing that's important when you're constructing formulas is if you open a bracket or a parentheses, if that's the terminology you're more used to, you must always remember to close a bracket. Hit enter and it's going to perform that calculation. How else can I use this sum function? Well, I can do this even quicker by using auto sum. So if I now want to do the same thing and add up the numbers for Q2, I can use auto sum. So I'm going to find that on the formulas tab, you'll see here we have a big auto sum button. Now if I click the drop down, it's going to show me all of the functions. And these are the big five that I call them, the most commonly used functions that I can use with auto sum. So if I click sum, it automatically selects the nearest cell range. So it makes an intelligent guess as to the numbers that I want to add up. I can see that that is correct. Hit enter and that is slightly quicker than typing in the formula. How can I make that even quicker? Well, we have a keyboard shortcut for auto sum as well. What I could do is press control semicolon, sorry, not control semicolon, <laughs> sorry, alt equals, alt equals, and that is going to do auto sum as well, okay? Alt equals, even quicker, hit enter, and it's going to give me that total. So three different ways there that I can compile a formula. Now, another way that you can compile formulas, apart from actually typing it into the cell, some people prefer to use the functions uh, dialog box. Now, I'm not one of those people. I prefer to type my formulas into cells. I don't know why. It's just the way I've always done it. However, a lot of people tell me, particularly when they're learning formulas, they prefer to use the functions dialog box. So let me just show you what I mean by that. Again, up on our formulas tab, the first button we have here says insert function. You can see there is a keyboard shortcut to bring up this functions dialog box of shift plus F3. Now, If I click this, this allows me to search through for all of the functions in Excel. So I could type in a brief description if I'm not sure what I'm looking for. So if I want a function that's going to add numbers, I could type in add numbers and click on go. And it's going to pull back all of the formulas which are going to help me do that. So I can say, OK, there is the sum function. Let's double click. And it opens up this little functions dialog box. Now, this is basically just the function arguments that appear underneath the formula when you're typing it into the cell. But it displays it in a slightly different way. So here, what I need to do, number one, I can just select the cell range, click on OK, and it basically does the same thing. OK, so it doesn't matter which method you use, whichever one you find easiest is going to work. Now, another thing we could do, and I'm just going to delete out all of these, is we could use autofill. So if we have typed in the formula, in this case, the sum formula in cell C15, if we want to use this same formula to calculate the other columns, instead of typing out the formula or using auto sum, I can simply copy the formula across to these other cells. So to do that, we use our autofill handle. And you can use this on any formula. If we click in the cell, notice in the bottom right hand corner, I have a tiny little green square that's slightly bold. And when I hover over my mouse over it, I get that tiny little black cross. That means I'm in autofill mode and I can simply drag the formula across to copy it. And Excel is intelligent enough to know that because I'm moving this formula across, it adjusts the cell references to, to make them relevant so that that formula is correct. And that is what we call relative referencing. And we're going to talk about this more when we talk about relative versus absolute. So just keep that in the back of your mind for now. OK, so we can autofill formulas as well. The final thing I'm going to show you here is I'm going to fill total column just here as well. So let's just type in the calculation. I'm going to open my brackets and this time I want to add C3 to F3 close the bracket, hit enter. Another way I can very quickly copy a formula down is to highlight all the cells where I want to copy the formula to and press control D. And that's going to copy that formula down as well. OK, so that is how you use the sum calculation. It's the most simple formula in Excel and it's the, the probably the one that you will learn first. 
If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To see the full course that this video came from, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.